with one voice, we will sing. Every tribe and every tongue brings a harmony. With one voice, we will bring heaven's beautiful melody down to this land. Go ahead and be seated in the presence of the Lord. See, I'm excited about today because today is the first Sunday. And I know a little bit about the first. Y'all must know a little bit about the first because y'all are here too. Huh. Mm. We're going to have to teach on that first fruit, that first Sunday. Because see, it's something special about the first. I'm excited about what God has for us today. And what he's going to do with this, 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 I'm just, I'm ecstatic. I'm just ecstatic with the Holy Spirit because I know God has something in store for, 20, for the year of our Lord, 2012, this year, like never before. Amen. So I'm just sitting on the edge of my seat. I'm like a, I'm like a pit bull on the chain just waiting to get out <laughs> because I know God and I know he's up to something. So I'm excited to see what that is. So are y'all excited? Yes. Yeah? Yes. What y'all excited about? <laughs> what about Jesus? All right. Amen. I'm excited about Jesus. Eternal security. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sister Soldier. That's what I'm excited about. So, uh, <clears throat> I, I am truly, truly, truly humbled that God has allowed me to stand before his people today on the first Sunday. The first Sunday of the new year, of the year of our Lord, 2012. A year that I believe is going to be a year of transition. Today's message is entitled Next Stage. Next Stage. And I'm going to be speaking to you this morning from the perspective of transition. See, I believe that as we grow in God and as we mature in God, we transition through different stages in our life. Different points in our life. And as the people mature and transition, so does the body. Are y'all with me, church? All right. Because the people are the culture of the church. So if they're maturing and growing and moving, come on, somebody. Amen. So will the ministry and the churches. Are y'all with me? Yes. Amen. When God is transitioning you, it's often in the area that you have forgotten about or have gotten complacent in. And see, your present circumstances don't allow you to see the good of the transition. A lot of times you can't even make the transition connection until you're on the other side. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. But it is always to glorify the Father. It's always for the kingdom. You see, transition is described as a movement or passage from one position, state, or stage to another. This is different than change. Are y'all with me, church? Change is a new job, a new boss a new house. That's change. They are not the same. One of the most difficult things about transition in life is that one of the, one of the most difficult things about life is transition because you're comfortable where you're at and God wants to move you to another place. Since transitions though are a part of our life, we need to be able to make them by letting go inwardly of what was in order to grab hold of what is to become and recognize that it's just another chapter in our life. Yes. Transition is just another chapter in the story of our life. So, my goal today is to inspire, is to encourage maybe students that's getting ready to graduate, service members that's coming home from deployments, families that's going to receive those service members, maybe little new ones that's introduced into the family, maybe, ha <laughs> ha Maybe parents that's transitioning to an empty nester. Can I preach to myself for a little while? Yes, <laughs> Amen. So that, so that we may look forward to the next chapter of our life while maintaining our new, I still maintain our good hope in Jesus. So that is my goal today, to let you know that transition is okay. I believe. 
believe that this is a crucial time for the church. God desires to take us to a place in the realm of his spirit where we have never been before. He's requiring transition so, so that we can proceed into the next move of his spirit. Now, why would we want to resist the moving of God's spirit? Why would we want to resist the moving of the Holy Spirit? Is that not what we've been praying for? Has that not been the cry of our hearts? God is looking for those who would not talk the talk, but walk the walk. It's one thing to say something with your mouth, but it's quite another thing to follow through on what has been spoken. Are y'all with me, church? Yes. Oh, yes. You see, many in the body of Christ are not willing to pay the price to go with God. Let me say that again. Many in the body of Christ are not willing to pay the price to go with God. They still want church their way. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They still want to hang on to their programs, their schedules, and their traditions. Why God is telling them to lay it all down and follow hard after me. See, we need some not traditional churches, but some transitional churches Amen. that will make a difference and cross over with God. Yes. So as I'm going through a transitional state of my own, God began to deal with me about this. Because, you know, when you're going through, that's when he starts to give you revelation. Mm -hmm. That's when he starts to give you some things when you're dealing with something yourself. Amen? Amen. So as I'm entering and looking forward into transitions in my life, God had me look at the book of Joshua. So we're going to be looking at the nation of Israel when they were led by the Spirit of God to their transition point. When they were about to cross over to the Jordan River, the Promised Land. When it was about to go from the wilderness to wonderful. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going from the wilderness to wonderful. Going from the wilderness to wonderful. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for what you're about to do in this place. Father God, I ask that you anoint my ears so that I may hear. Anoint my heart so that I may be filled with love, oh God. Anoint my mouth so that you may speak, Father. High advance behind your cross, Lord. Decrease, advance, and increase in you, and let your Holy Spirit take over, O oh Lord. We surrender this ministry and this message to you, O oh Lord. Do what you need to do, Father God. Grow us and mature us, Father God, and give us hope, and let us know that it is a new day, O oh Lord. Give us encouragement and strength, Father God, that we fight in your word. And this is what I ask. And the saints of living water says, I have dominion. I have dominion. I have dominion. Amen. So we're going to be opening our books to the, 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 the book of, open our Bibles to the book of Joshua. Y'all know that's an Old Testament. <laughs> Y'all know I love to hit the page. So, so the book of Joshua. When y'all got it, say I'm doing well in 2012. And we're going to start our reading right around verse 1. And we're going to be reading through the verse 9. Now I got the King James verse. What did you say, Devon? What did you need to do in this place? All right. We're going to read. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' minister, and said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan. Thou and this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your feet, the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness of this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall thy divide for an inheritance, the land which I swore unto their fathers to give to them. Only be thy strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand 
or to the left, that thy mind prosper whatsoever thy goest. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate there, therein day and night. And thou mayest observe to do all according to what is written in it. Within thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, and whensoever thy goest. Amen. Amen. Now you should have a little note page in your program. And y'all know I'm all those up, so. I'm going to give you this morning nine points to help you transition into what God has called you for or into the new year or when you're in a state where you are transitioning. But in front of each one of those points, I want you to write your first name. Amen? So it would be your name and then the point. Your name and then the point. Because we like to customize things so we know that God is talking to us. Amen? Okay. <clears throat> Our first point is this. Don't be distracted by the past. So it would say, Vance, don't be distracted by the past. Verse 1 and part of 2, <clears throat> God says, God tells, God tells Joshua, Moses is dead. Moses is dead. What used to work ain't going to work no more. See, the goal is the same, but the method might have to change. You can't get caught up on what used to be because it will hinder you from what is to become. And you want to be able to enjoy life the way God has intended you to. Are y'all with me? One man said it like this. No matter how hard the past, you can always begin again today. Don't be distracted to the past. I believe Joshua, Joshua, Joshua was feeling kind of bad. And God said, boy, pick your head up. Moses is dead. I don't need you to worry about what's behind you. I need you to worry about what's in front of you. I need you to focus on the future. You can't change the past. But the future, you got that, baby. You need to lock in on that thing. Philippians 3, 13 to 14 says it like this. Brother, I do not consider myself to have taken hold. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, straining toward what is ahead. I press toward the goal to with Christ with, for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. You can't worry about the past. You got to keep your eye on the future because the minute you look back, you're out of position. All right. Come on now. Yes. It's like a compass. Y'all done done some land. Well, most of, well some of y'all have done some land now. If you're doing some land now and you're walking and you're following that compass and you look back, what's going to happen? You done moved over an inch and don't even know it. And the further you look back, the farther you go off course. You got to stay focused on the future. Don't be distracted by the past. Point two. Don't be deaf to his prompts. He says in verse two, arise and go. That's what he says in verse two. Arise and go. When the spirit of the Lord prompts you to move, then you need to move without hesitation. That's why it's so important that you know God's voice. It's imperative that you are in his word and have a prayer life. Take customized notes during sermons. Put yourself in the message. Ask yourself the hard questions and how you can apply those teachings to your everyday life. Hmm. See, when you walk with Jesus, he conditions your heart to where you're able to hear the word of the Lord and able to act upon it. When you're walking with him. Matthew 13 and 9 says it like this. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. You know the, you know the Lord's voice by walking with him. Getting in his presence. Spending some time with him. Building that right relationship with him. Having a prayer life. So don't be deaf to his prophets. When he say move, move. 
When he says stay, stay. Point three. Don't doubt his promises. Vance, don't doubt his promises. He goes on to say in verses three, he says this. Every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon that I have given unto you. And he describes that place. Hmm. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You have to believe 100% in God. You've got to be all in. You've got to be all in. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, no matter what it smells like, you've got to be all in. You gotta get the attitude if God said it, that settles it. I believe it. You gotta walk by faith and not by sight. Hebrews eleven six says it like this: and without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He reward those who earnestly seek Him. You can't be one foot in and one foot out. Half saved, half not. You can't be walking one way Monday through, through Saturday and another way on Sunday. All right. You got to be sold out. 100%. Look at your neighbor and say, I got to be all in. You got to be all in. It ain't no halfway with God. This ain't the Congress. It ain't no halfway. You all in with him, baby. Point four, depend on his protection. Vance, depend on his protection. Verse five, he goes on to say that there shall not any man be able to stand before thee in all the days of your life. You have to understand and know that you are a child of the living God and you're protected by the blood, anointed by him for his purpose. This is where you have to remember your testimony, you see. Come on. That's right. Come on. This is where you have to remember your testimony. And the things that God has brought you through. When the enemy tried to attack you, left you battered, beaten, bruised, and left for dead, and how God raised you up out of your brokenness and said, that's enough. Get your hands off my son. Get your hands off my daughter. That's enough. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. This is when you have to remember what God has done for you. You're protected. The Bible says, don't touch my anointed. Hallelujah. You got to know that and believe that. Point five. Be directed by his presence. Vance, be directed by his presence. Let him guide your path. He goes on in five B to say in five to say this. Hmm. I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will never fail thee nor forsake thee. Let him guide your path. Move in his spirit. Don't move before he prompts you to, do you'll get ahead of him. Don't lag behind because you'll miss him and your blessing. Move when he moves so you can walk in unison with him. So you can be in a position to receive what he has for you to receive. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah, you. Come here. Don't be scared. I got to make this thing plain. Come back here with him. Walk ahead. He's out of position. I can't give him what I need to give him. Come back here. Stay right here. He's lacking behind. I can't give him what I need to give him. Walk with him. Now I can bless him because he's walking with me. Going back to the seat. You got to walk with God. 
<laughs> you got to be in a position to give him what he, what, you got to be in a position to receive what he has for you. If you get ahead of him, you're out of position. He can't give you what he needs to give you. If you're behind, you're out of position. You got to walk in unison. You got to be in right relationship with him, side by side. God rewards obedience. When you're in right relationship with him and you're walking right, he's going to reward you. Halfway summary, just to make sure you keep it up. Number one, don't be distracted by the past. Number two, don't be deaf to his promise. Number three, don't doubt his promises. Number four, depend on his protection. Number five, be directed by his presence. Number six, desire his power. Ah. In verses six, seven, and nine, God says three times, be strong in what? Ah, somebody's reading with me. Be strong and be strong and courageous, strong and good courage. If he says it three times, that tells me that it's important. That's what it tells me. Anytime God says something or Jesus says something three times, it's important. Here the Lord is talking about walking in his power with confidence and peace, knowing that he's in full control of the events that's about to transpire, trusting in him, standing on his word, even, standing on his word, even when you're faced with the fiery darts of the enemy, understanding that his power is like his love. It conquers all. The love of God conquers all. You got to know that you know that you know that you know that God's got you. Unwavering type faith. Now I know ain't none of us perfect. But that don't mean we can't aim to be. We got to know that God's got us. We got to walk with God. We have to walk in his power. We got enough of weak Christians walking around talking about they always going through. Are you ever going to make it to the other side? Pick your head up, child. We got to be strong and bold in this thing. That's what attracts people. Point seven. Delight in his prizes. Delight in his prizes. Verse six, he says that for of this people shall I divide for the inheritance, the land which I swore unto their fathers to give to them. He also says in, 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 in verse 8 as well that then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. Know that the Lord wants you to be blessed. He promised the promised land to Abraham and his seed a long time ago. He wants you to be blessed and you can be a blessing. So rejoice when God rewards you, but understand where it comes from. Understand that inheritance, prosperity, elevation, good success all comes from the Lord. Some would have you believe that he wants you walking around broke, busted, and disgusted, always going through. But I'm here to tell you, he already went through, so you ain't got to go through. Amen. Come on now. He wants you blessed. He wants you to have some stuff. He don't want you walking around broke, busted, pessimistic, nothing positive to say, always negative, always talking about how hard things is. That don't attract people to the body. We got to use what we need to attract people to the body so we can get them safe. But if you're walking around blessed and highly favored, and you're walking around in the confidence of the Lord, and God is, God is rewarding your obedience, then he wants you to have some stuff. He wants you to have some homes some cars, some good relationships, some health. He wants you to be healthy. He wants you to be inspired. So when they say, what does that he's got? I need that. I got some Jesus, baby. That's what I got. That's what attracts people. Let's not get it twisted. I'm not talking the prosperity gospel, but I'm talking about God wants you to have hope. He wants you to be able to inspire and encourage. We all know we live in a worldly society. So why not use those things for the edification of the kingdom? Oh, I must be preaching to myself. What you said. You got to use those things. Those are tools. Those are weapons. So delight when he rewards you. How did you 
get that, God bless you. How do you have a healthy marriage? God bless you. You don't ever talk about going to the doctor. God bless you. That's all I got for you is some Jesus. If you want anything else, you got to go somewhere else. Come on now. Come on. Number eight. Do his principles. Vance, do his principles. Observe all things. He talks in verse seven. He says this. Hmm. Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whensoever thy goest. The book of the law, he says in verse 8, shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou mayest observe to do all according what is written in it. Hmm. Keep his principles. Stay in right relationship with Christ. Allow your lives to become a walking, living epistle for Jesus Christ and his principles. He tells us countless of times throughout scriptures to observe, deserve, and do all the things that he has commanded to us. Have the kind of personality that attract people, not the kind of personality that repay. Oh yeah, y'all, I like y'all don't know nobody that got a personality like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all know somebody. They couldn't attract the bee with honey, but they say they're a Christian. Have the kind of personality that's inviting. Walk in the nine fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5 and 25. Walk them out, baby. Be positive. Have some integrity, some character about yourself. But that don't mean you don't tell it like the T.I. Like the is. Yeah, you tell it like the T.I. is. You tell it like it is. But you can do that with love and with honor and with truth. Amen? Amen? Number nine. Number nine. Do not be dismayed or panic. Vance, do not be dismayed or panic. He goes on to say in verse nine this right here. He says, huh, <laughs> Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whensoever thy goest. Don't have any fear. Know that the Lord is with you. In his word, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, you've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. Come on, somebody. He says in Luke 10, 19, he says it like this. I have given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. To overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Not some of the power. Not part of the power. Not piece of the power. But all the power. Yeah. He's already got the victory. You just have to receive it, believe it, and walk it out. Amen. Know that the Lord is with you. Amen. Nine things about transition. Don't be distracted from the past. Don't be deaf to his promise. Don't disturb the promise. Don't doubt his promises. Depend on his protection. Be directed by his presence. Desire his power. Delight in his prizes. Do his principles. Do not be dismayed or panicked. These are the things that's going to help you ease into a transition when you're in that stage to where we're transitioning. See, people have a tendency to dislike transition. They dislike anyone or anything that ruffles their feathers or disrupts their plans. They require God to move according to their agenda and not his. But see, there's one problem with that. That don't work for God. So what it does, as a result, it limits God and what he can do for you. We can make the transition flow with the Holy Spirit or we can resist it completely and be content to do our own thing. But if we choose the latter, we will miss our day of visitation. We must be willing to lay down the old and walk into the new thing of God. Amen. Are y'all with me, church? Yeah. Oh, I feel a preach coming on. The new thing of God. You see, the fact of the matter is, God wants to move you from lukewarm to hot, from death to life, from passive to active, from talk to walk, from life to abundance, 
from mediocrity to action, from meeting to ministry, from mechanical to spirit moving, from glory to glory. I wish I had a shot in church at the end. God, you should move, but you got to be in position to receive. Right, right. He wants to bless you. He wants to prosper you. He wants to give you hope and encouragement and empower you, but you got to be in a position to receive. Some time in his presence. Some time at the altar. God, I'm going through a new thing in my life. Help me, Lord. That's what I did. God, I'm going to transition into something that I've never been before. Help me, God. Direct my path. Show me the way. Show me what you're doing, Lord, so I can join in the help. I am here to tell you that your life is an unfolding story filled with many transition points. And when one chapter's in, you got to turn the page. No matter how good it was or how bad it was, it's still time to turn the page. You can't stay in that chapter. Time has a way of always moving forward. Nothing stays the same. That is what happened in Exodus, you see. They were ready to transition, so God delivered them. The problem was is that they couldn't let go of the past. They couldn't let go of the past. Their past world was Egyptian. 400 years of enslavement. They walked, talked, ate, and thought like Egyptians. 40 years of transition because they weren't willing to turn. 40 years of transition because they wasn't willing to turn the page. Not realizing the greatest thing about the next chapter, the greatest thing about the next page, the greatest thing about the next transition point is that it hasn't been written yet. It hasn't been written yet. You can't control the past, but the future, oh, that's a different story. You got some say about that. That's the greatest thing about turning the page. Going to the next chapter, moving to the next spirit of God. It hasn't been written yet. You have to say. The next chapter is just pregnant with possibilities. Hope to the hopeless. Water to the thirst. Three things. Hope. Faith and love. Faith is what you're rooted in. Hope is what you're pressing toward. Love is denial, the realm of the revelation, the presence of God right here, right now. Those are the three things that we look forward to in the year of our Lord, 2012. Love, faith. All impossibilities become possible with God. Amen. So I stand here today and I'll tell you, get excited about 2012. Amen. Get encouraged. Be ready to inspire or be inspired. Get ready to go when he says go, whether it's to China or to Ecuador. Be ready to do his bidding wherever he shall send you. Be strong in the Lord. Be of good courage because he is with you. So when that little one goes off to college or goes off to where they're going, they're going to be all right, baby. You enjoy your reward because now it's God has given you some me time. When that little one is coming into the family for the first time, love on them. They're going to be all right, but don't take it too serious because they're going to fall. They're going to hit their head. They're going to get some bruises and some bumps, but they're going to be all right. Amen. Enjoy the position where life has got you. But look forward to the future. Forget about 2011. It's gone. Got your hat. Get your coat. See you later. Goodbye. It's gone. <laughs> Don't look back. Stay focused. Stay focused on the future. Because you're going to get off track if you don't. So I feel like you guys have just been previewed to a conversation that God has with me. Because like I said, I'm transitioning. But I welcome it. I welcome the challenges. I welcome the glory. Because I know God is up to something. He's up to something. 
Mama Renee was saying she's glad 2011 though, and I said amen, because we know the future is great. So get excited. There is hope. The gospel is not dead. It shall go forth. Amen. With or without us, it's gone. Amen. So I'll tell you, we're going to do something a little bit different today. <coughs> if you're at a stage to where you're getting ready to go through a transition, 8 to 80 black people in crazy, I want you to come up here this morning to this altar because we're going to do a corporate prayer today. All of us need a little prayer today. We all need strength for the new year because we don't know what God has for us. Is that okay if I do that, Pastor? If you're going through a transition, you got some new ones coming in. You got some leaving the nest. You're going off to college. You're coming home from deployment. You got somebody that's getting ready to come home from deployment. Oh, everybody falls somewhere in this category today. I believe we need a little prayer for the new year. There's something about the first corporate prayer for the first Sunday and the first new year. We surrender to God because God blesses the first fruit. The first fruit is special to the Lord. Oh, look at somebody in this place. Now, I, I need a little strength, so I'm going to ask my brother Andrew to come on up here with me. <laughs> because I, I need some prayer, too. And now that I'm going to ask him to come up with me, I'm going to ask him to lead us. Because I think, I think we all need it, brother. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. I'm going put him on the spot. But I know he can handle it. That's why I did it. So you just, just give us some strength, brother. Just, just let God bless this new year be a great one for us. Father, we ask for your courage this morning. Yes, Lord. As we take a new step into this new year, yes, Lord. that you would give us the strength to yes, follow Lord. your path, yes, to walk Lord. next to you, and accept the gifts that you give us, yes, accept Lord. the discouragement, accept the challenges, accept the difficulties yes, that we Lord. may go to through, yes, Lord. and that we would we would be cheerful, and joyful through them. Yes, Lord. that you would give us the heart of Paul and finding joy in the yes. midst of the difficulties and the yes, challenges. Lord. Right now, Father, right. also that we would find and see the prosperous yes, in this new year. Yes, that you would yes, give us the strength Lord. to be guided by you, yes, to reach Hallelujah. this world around us through a cheerful heart, yes, through a giving God. heart, through we a loving heart. Right now. Yes, Father, God. I pray that you would just guide us yes. to be the men and women that you want us to be this new year. Yes, Lord. Thank you for how you've changed us through this last year. Make yes. us better people as we go into this new year. Yes, God. Give us your Holy Spirit right as a now, guide. Father. Help us to just yes, take Lord. the steps that you want us to in yes, the right Lord. direction. Yes, Lord. Thank you for all you're doing in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.